Hi there this is Unmesh from Pixel Imperfect how are you doing I hope you having a great day and making it an incredible one Today I'm going to share with you a simple three step process to entirely retouch skin in Photoshop right from removing blemishes to frequency separation to getting the skin tones right to even skin sharpening we kind of cover it all it's a fairly simple process and a great combination of simplicity being moderately fast and also super high quality you're going to have a lot of fun so without any further ado let's get started back in the magical world of photoshop and if you wish to go ahead and download this photo and follow along you know what to do check the links in the description the first thing we need to do is to remove the blemishes but before we do that there's a trick that's going to help us see the blemishes more clearly and that is simply creating a black and white adjustment layer right here where did that go there it is and then simply decrease the reds since blemishes are mostly reds they're going to become more and more visible and of course don't show it to the model you can also increase the yellows it makes it easy for us to spot the blemishes now to make it even more simple i created an action for you and you can download it absolutely for free check the links in the description to install the action go to window actions if you don't already see it here click on this grid right there choose load actions load the action locate the action and this is the action blemish scan simply play it that's all it will do it automatically for you and if you need to do some adjustments you can always double click on the symbol of the adjustment layer and make adjustments here this is fine now you can use whatever method you like to remove the blemishes for faster results you can use the remove tool if you don't have access to that if you're using an older version of photoshop you can use the spot healing brush tool for more higher quality result you can use the patch tool for this example we'll just select the background layer and create a new layer on top and maybe select the remove tool One thing that I love about remove tool is this. By the way, you want to make sure sample all layers is checked otherwise this layer is empty, right? Now, take a look at this. You can just circle the blemish and release it. It fills everything inside of it. You don't have to change the brush size or take the time to paint the entire thing. It's super simple. Similarly right here, just make a circle around it. Boom, gone. And just like that, remove everything that stands out. The more you can fix things now, the easier it makes it during frequency separation another tip is never do big areas with the remove tool as of now as of recording this video what happens is if you do a big area like this just for an example it will leave a pattern there can you see it that kind of a weird pattern so be careful of that so here is the before and here is the after now after you're done you can turn off the blemish check layer we will need this later so keep it don't delete it for now before we move on to the next step i want to share with you a quick reminder that i'm going to do a two day full day complete photoshop workshop in person in colorado springs we're going to have a lot of fun lots of amazing conversations as creatives and on day 1 we're going to cover everything that you need to know to get up and running with photoshop that by the end of the day photoshop will never look intimidating for you whether you're a beginner intermediate or even advanced we're going to build a solid foundation with photoshop so that even if you have never used photoshop by the end of the day you will start incorporating it in your professional workflows on day 2 we're going to go into more advanced techniques in depth like color grading retouching and compositing especially for photographers i really hope you can make it and i hope to see you there please check the link in description for the passes the next step as you guessed it right is frequency separation now there are so darn many ways to do frequency separation and even in this channel we have like a dozen videos just on that but today i'm going to share with you a technique that's going to give you complete control just as an artist who paints in a portrait you going to get the control over how to shape in particular areas like the cheeks the forehead and the most important part is it's super fun to do and also a warning it's super addictive and it's not that hard it's actually fun so here's how to do it first of all if you're unfamiliar we separate the image into two frequencies high frequency and low frequency the high frequency contains the texture and the low frequency contains the colors and the tones if we work on the color and the tones the textures don't get affected to understand how it works and do it from scratch there is a video that you can watch for this video we'll just use an action which you can download absolutely for free so there is pix frequency separation action you need to check whether your image is 8 bit or 16 bit 
which you can tell from right here. Alternatively, you can go to image mode and have a look. 8 bits per channel is checked. So we're going to play 8 bit. Otherwise, we'll play 16 bit if it's a 16 bits per channel image. Let's play it. It's going to automatically bring up the Gaussian blur dialog box. You can sample this area. For example, you want to ensure preview is checked and slowly and gradually increase the radius to the point where the skin texture just goes away. For this example, I'm going to choose a higher number. The higher the number you choose, the lower you have to work. But at the same time, you have slightly lesser control. I'm going to keep it 10, hit OK. Now have a look. There is a group for frequency separation. And if you open it, you'll find two layers, low frequency and high frequency. And both of them, have a look, this is low frequency and this is high frequency. And both of them combine together to give you the same image. Now here starts the fun part. Turn on the blemish check layer. Turn off high frequency. And just above low frequency, we're going to create a new layer. Now, before we start painting, you want to make sure you choose the eyedropper tool. Sample size 3 by 3 average is fine. And you want to make sure sample current and below is selected. So that when we sample the colors, it doesn't sample from the black and white adjustment. Now, let us take the brush. You want to make sure you choose a soft round brush and then simply decrease the flow, which by default would be at 100, 2, 2 or 3 whatever you're comfortable with and just start painting. Let's say you want to work on the forehead. This area looks a bit odd. So take a sample from the good area. Hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click to take a sample and just paint over this area. That's all. Similarly, just soften it out. Take a sample and paint. Take a sample and paint. Hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click to take a sample and paint. There you go. And just with a few strokes, that seems to be gone. Now I've done a very quick job here. Let's turn on high frequency. Have a look at the before and after. So here's the before. You see that unevenness? Here's the after. See how easily that is gone? Similarly, I'm going to turn off high frequency and paint on other areas. Now as you're painting, you want to also have a look at the big picture simultaneously. And for it, I recommend going to window and then navigator. The navigator shows up right here. Enlarge it a little bit so that you can see what's happening in real time, which area is zoomed in and which area you're working on. Do notice that the navigator is showing us the big picture and it really helps us see which areas are missing, which areas are uneven and where we need to work on. Also, let's say you're zoomed in too much into some areas. It is hard to see what is uneven. But once it is zoomed out, it is easy to see. As you can see, you can even take the time to shape the nose if you wish. You don't have to do that. I'm just going to share it here so that you know you can if you want to. Now, one thing we usually miss when working on the skin is the lips. So we need to zoom in and work on the shape of the lips overall. Let's take a look at the before and after. Here's the overall before and here is the after. And now here's the big reveal. Here's the fun. Here's what you have been working towards all this while. And this is what we get. Let's turn on high frequency now and have a look at this portrait. Doesn't this look amazing? And again, here is the before and here is the after. And this is just with frequency separation. And now you can turn off blemish check and have a look at the before and after. Here's the before and here is the after. This is so darn good. Now, if you don't have the time to do all this and if you're a professional photographer and you want to spend more time shooting or maybe you're a commercial retoucher, you want to speed up your workflow, I always recommend Retouch For Me plugins. You can try them for free on your images and then be the judge. I'll link up the instructions on how to get the free trial in the description. And let us just compare. I'm going to create a new layer on top and press Control, Alt, Shift and E. I have turned off the frequency separation layer. And for this one, we're going to go to Filter, Retouch For Me. And let's try dodge and burn. By the way, that's also another method. We have a video on that if you want to do it manually. And let it analyze. And it's super fast and have a look at it. It also did a fantastic job in few seconds. Now, of course, you can choose how much you want to blend. So this is no dodging and burning. And this is full and more. So let's go with about 176. All right. If you want to keep it non-destructive and adjustable, you can check soft light layer and hit apply. And it actually creates a soft light layer. All you have to do is to change the blend mode from normal to soft light and have a look at it. Here's the before, here's the after. All automatic in seconds. Before, after. You want to compare it with the frequency separation we just did. So here's the retouch for me result. And here is the frequency separation we just did. Again, retouch for me. 
frequency separation. I have to say, the retouch for me one looks a bit more natural, but you get way more controls if you do it manually. But then again, why wouldn't I do it if I'm running short on time? By the way, they're also running a discount. Uh, I'll leave a code in the description as well. Before moving on to the next step, I'm gonna give you an incredible tip to sharpen the skin. Yes, you heard that right. And you can do it right from inside of frequency separation. So let's open up this group and make a copy of high frequency where the texture resides. So select the high frequency layer and press Ctrl or Command J. Look at the sharpness, isn't it pretty amazing? But it's way too much. So how do we control it in a way that is natural and not just simply opacity? Double click on the right hand side of this layer and simply remove it from the dark areas by taking the slider of the underlying layer from left to right, just like that. And keep it only in the highlights. Again, this is harsh, so hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and take it all apart. And have a look at the sharpness of the skin. It just is amazing. Here's the before, here's the after. And on top of that, you can control the opacity. I'm gonna keep it, for example, let's go for 60. And you can mask it out as well. So select this layer, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the Mask button to create a negative mask. Then take the brush and paint with white where you want the sharpening. So I'm going to paint all over. You want to make sure the flow is 100 now. There we go. The best thing I like about this is that it just adds so much more pop. Here's the before. Here's the after. Look at it. Before. After. And there's not much haloing. And if you see haloing, you can always remove that. You can always mask it out a little bit. And there you go. It looks pretty darn amazing. And the final step is evening out the skin tones. Right now, the forehead is a bit different. The body is a bit different. This area is a bit different. That area is more reddish. So the skin tones are all over the place and they should differ area to area slightly. If all of the skin tones all throughout your body is the same, it, some areas can get really weird, but we can still slightly make it uniform. So let's close this group first and we're gonna create a gradient map at the top. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose gradient map. It maps the colors of highlights and shadows and everything in between. So right now the highlights are white and the shadows are of skin color. So that is how the image is mapped. What we want is turning this off, opening up its properties. If you don't see it, double click on the symbol of the adjustment layer. This property will show up. Single click right here and then Let's sample a skin color for the highlights. So for the right hand side slider, single click on the color and let's sample, for example, let's go with this one. You wanna make sure sample size is three by three average, current and below. Now notice the location. The brightness is 86, right? So set its location to 86. For the left one, let's click on color and we're gonna sample this dark one. Brightness is 52, hit okay. And set its location to 52. Let's select something darker again. I'm gonna create a slider right here. And for this one, we're gonna sample maybe this color. Location is 34, brightness is 34. So let's set the location to 34. And you can sample as many as you like. Let's maybe go for a darker color right here. Single click right here. And maybe let's sample this color from under the nose. Very dark, brightness is 22, hit okay. 22, there you go, hit okay. Now we can turn this on but have a look this looks weird right we only need to change the color so let us change the blend mode from normal to color now we need to apply it only on the skin so what do we do we select the mask press ctrl or command i and simply paint on the skin you can also use select color range but that's not going to get very accurate so we're just going to manually paint it like this you don't have to be super accurate. You just want to make sure that the eyes are not painted, the lips are not painted, and of course the other areas are okay. Don't worry about the redness of the cheeks. We're going to get it back later. Now the color is a bit leaking outside the subject. No worries. We can select any of these three selection tools. Click on select subject. Now press Control shift i Command shift i to invert the selection and take the brush and paint the outside areas with black. Just like that and it's gone. Simple. Control or Command d Perfect. Now the skin is uniform all throughout. Here's the before. See, it was not uniform. And here's the after. It's way too much uniform. So let's decrease the opacity to about 50 for now. And there you go. It looks so much better. Also, some areas needed to be a bit more red. So you can erase it from those areas. So select the mask right here. With black, you can erase it slightly from the cheek and bring back those pinks a little bit. I would even go ahead and decrease the opacity further to 40%. And there you go. With just that, here's the before and here is the after.
By the way, just one more little tip. I wanted the lips to be a bit more pronounced and for that I already have a selection. This is not a selection class and if you want to learn more about basics of selection, you can watch this complete guide right here. So I'm just going to load my selection. Select, load selection. I had saved it with lips. Hit OK. And with that active, we can simply create a curves adjustment layer and just bring it down like that. But then again, it is very, very sharp. So select the mask and in the mask properties, increase the feather. That's all. So let's set it to about five pixels and now it is smooth. And there we have our final result. Now, whatever we have done so far is way too much. I wouldn't go this heavy handed in the real world, but sometimes it's important to show it so that you can take a look at the before and after. I would go back and in the real world, go to the frequency separation group and simply decrease its opacity. So right now it is at 100%, right? So we can go to somewhere around 60% so that it's more natural. Here's the before, here's the after. The effect is still there, but also there's a bit of naturalness here. Just a quick recap, we first remove the blemishes. You can use whatever method that you like. Then we apply frequency separation. We separate the photo into two frequencies, high and low. The high frequency has texture and the low frequency has color and the tone. We create a layer in between it and start painting. Take a sample of a nearby area color and just paint. And finally, to even out all the skin tones, we create a gradient map. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. We're up here on cloud nine.